previously learned how to read data from one Micro 800 PLC to another Micro 800 PLC using CIP or SIP messaging instructions. The write is going to be very similar. So if you haven't watched the read instruction, go ahead and watch it because we're just going to make some mild modifications to what we already did there to do the write message instruction. For those of you who are following along in the Festo Didactic series, we are making these modifications in our main PLC. Quick recap is we are simply copying our digital inputs to inputs from main PLC. Also, there is a typo here. It should be to main PLC, but if I change this, that'll break our read one that we already did. And then down here, we have outputs from main PLC, and that is going to be controlling our output. So this is what we want to write to, is this right here. But let's go back to our Festo main PLC. And these are the instructions we used in the previous video to read data. So we're going to do almost the same thing. We're going to go ahead and bring down another new rung and an instruction block and double click on it and type CIP, and that will bring up our two SIP message instructions. And we are going to use the send a symbolic message. Even though it says send, we can use that to write. So we have our control config. I'm going to call this my write control. Then we have our symbolic config. I'm going to call this my write symbolic. And notice it already is filling in the data types all the way down. Then our target config, I'm going to call my right target. And we have our data. And I am going to call this my right data. And similarly to we learned in our read one, since we are doing 10 double integers, and these are small integers, small integers are 8-bit, double integers are 32-bit. So we need whatever we were writing to times four. And that's why we have 40 here. And then on our status, we will put write status. And on our data length, we will put write data length. And then for most of these, we can look at our read and find out our write. So let's just double click into them again. And let's open up our read control. And mainly we have our trigger type and that is how many milliseconds between each time you want to write this data. If we put it at zero, it's only going to do it when this message instruction becomes true. But we're just going to use the same 20 milliseconds that we did on our read. Now, be careful here because if, and I'll go ahead and do it just so we see what happens. If you do, if you end up highlighting that and changing this and then click OK, see we got an error here because now I made it write control trigger type. It still needs that whole tag. So, in this case, we want the whole write control. And I'll show you that you could actually hit the cancel button in this next one. So now let's double click on our write symbolic and we'll open up the read. And the big things we have is what is the tag name in the other PLC? And we have our length. Now in our other PLC, our tag name in this case is going to be outputs from main PLC. In fact, I'm going to highlight that, right-click and copy it, and then we'll go over here and open up the write symbolic. Don't do it on the read. We are going to put into our symbol the outputs from main PLC. And then our length or our count is going to be 10 again, and that is because over here we actually made this an array with a length of 10, because 0 through 9 equals 10. Now back over here, let me just show you what we can do right here, because a lot of you'll be scared to hit the cancel button here, and typically I would say, yeah, you don't want to do it. But these enter immediately into the project value. So if I hit cancel now, and I double click right back into the symbolic and open it up, they are there. So this OK button is just to assign the cell to whatever you click. So we can hit cancel. Now we have our write target. And let's just open up our read target. We'll do a quick recap. As we have four, and that stands for which port on the Micro 800 that you're sending this message out of do you want to use? And four is our Ethernet port. 
And then we have the IP address of our PLC. And in this case, it is 192.168.121. And we can leave the rest of these at their default values. So I am just going to copy this and go right down here and paste it. I did, I did it anyway. I accidentally double clicked there. But yeah, we will paste. Why is it not letting me paste there? Oh, I'm in the wrong place. That's why. <laughs> we'll paste it right there. And then, yes, to fix my accidental error, we will hit the right target. And then we have our right data. That's going to be what we're writing to. And we do need to do a little work here because we want the same copy instruction so that we can get it into normal double integers because if we double click on our right data it's single integers or eight bits and that just makes math a little hard on us so let's bring down another instruction and one thing about this we're going to do the copy but here we had to have this read status done because we were reading this data and we only wanted to update once it had read new data in this case we can just put the copy instruction and be copying all the time to this right data. So we'll double click on it and put in a COP instruction. And for our source, we are actually going to need to make this. So double click on the bottom of it. And this will be handling outputs. And it will be a double integer with a size of zero through nine. That will match what we have over there, and we'll click OK. And then our source offset will be zero, same as we did up here on this one. Our destination offset is also zero, our length is 10. And as we learned in the previous video, that swap did need to be true. So, oops, and I hear you, oh, no, I'm right. No, I'm not right. <laughs> I am partially right, so yeah. Our destination is this right data right here. Let's copy it and we'll paste it here. And then our destination offset is zero. And then we have a length. And I was wrong on the length. They caught it right as I was doing it. Let's go ahead and highlight and just hit this length again because this confuses us a lot. Is our length is the number of destination elements to copy. So we were 10 up here in this one because our destination was a double integer. Our destination down here is the right data. And if we double click on it, it's single integers. And that length needs to be 40 in this one. So we'll make that length 40. And yes, in this case, as we learned previously, we need that swap. And if you're not sure why we're doing that swap or you're not even sure what in the world we're doing with that read instruction, then hit that subscribe button and go check out our lesson section. But let's go ahead and download this program. So that should be bit four of element zero of our array. So I am going to double click on my handling outputs and I am gonna open up element zero and I'm gonna check bit four. I have my air off. And it did not work because you did exactly what I told you to do. And <laughs> we just copied the read data, which included that we're actually not writing data. We're reading data. So let's double click on our write symbolic and open it up. And we have a symbolic write service here. And from our previous video, we still have our help files open for all this. And our service, if we want to write, is a one there. Now be really careful because I am going to change this online. But remember, when we go to download again, since we didn't put it in as one of our logical values, it's going to go back to a zero. So I hit enter and immediately I hear that solenoid click. And so now if we double click on our handling outputs and I open this up, and we go back to output four and I can hear it clicking on and off and I'm just going to click it on here and then let's disconnect from this PLC and we will connect to the one that we're writing with and there it is coming in turning on 
digital output number four. Now, let's talk about should we be reading data or should we be writing data? Now, there's a lot of people that make arguments about efficiency as far as network bandwidth when you're reading or writing. This is not a networking class, so we're not even going to talk about that. But we are going to talk about it from a troubleshooting perspective. If we write to a PLC, in this case, we're writing to output four controls the solenoid. Let's go ahead and do it. Let's let's say we're trying to figure out why is this solenoid on. We would come across, and just like in all of our troubleshooting videos, we right-click it, we cross-reference, and we are looking for the one that has write access, and nothing has write access. And that is the disadvantage of using a write message, as really this data is getting written from somewhere. I have no idea where it is getting written to. And in some advanced lessons, we actually are going to talk about networking and how to troubleshoot and how to narrow that down. But for the most part, in a troubleshooting scenario, and I'll say with almost no exception, you're better off to read. Because then when you do the cross-reference, we'll be able to see, oh, we're reading the data from this PLC. And then we could go into it and find it. Now that we know how to read and write with CIP SIP messaging, let's learn how to do this over Modbus TCP.